I want to talk for a moment about retroviruses. HIV is an example of a retrovirus that can infect humans. Retroviruses are able to insert their genetic material into the host genome. This is how they replicate. But because biology is quite messy, sometimes the retrovirus DNA gets stuck, mutated, leaving its DNA as an artifact within the host genome. We call these areas of the host genome endogenous retroviruses, or ERVs for short. If the virus happens to infect a germline cell, like an egg or sperm, then these ERVs can be passed down from parent to child. From an evolutionary perspective, this happens quite a lot. In fact, roughly 8% of the human genome is ERVs. They don't appear to be active viruses anymore. What is extremely cool about ERVs is that their presence or absence among species maps out evolution and common ancestry quite beautifully. For example, if an ERV event occurred in the most recent common ancestor of humans and chimps, we would expect to still see that ERV in both humans and chimps, but not the other primates. And because it reflects a single insertion event, we'll see that ERV at the same genetic position in both humans and chimps. Now, more rare events are possible. Mutation doesn't end with insertion. The ERVs could be deleted by mutation or moved by a process of duplication and translocation. And even independent ERV events are possible for the same virus. But these rare exceptions are predicted by evolutionary theory. Also, independent insertion events are not expected to occur in the same genetic position, independently. While there are spots in the genome that are susceptible to mutation, these hotspots are incapable of creating the so specific and consistent pattern we see in ERVs between species. Nor could we expect this process to happen over and over again, and in a way that is consistent with the common ancestry of life that's been inferred from other independent data. As such, ERVs are a remarkable validation for the pattern of common ancestry. ERVs are important to understand. It is becoming increasingly clear that some of these ERVs can impact human gene expression, including human tissue generation. The complex relationship between ERV evolution and human evolution is a hot topic in biology today. In fact, there is some evidence that in rare circumstances, evolutionary changes can reactivate an ERV, potentially having a role in some cancers and autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. I'll provide some links to learn more about ERVs. Also, for easy reading, I would check out A Planet of Viruses by Carl Zimmer. On a side note, in addition to ERVs, roughly 40% of the human genome has other viral-like qualities to it. So understanding virus evolution contributes to understanding our own genomes. So your connection to microbes and viruses is much deeper than just the bacteria and viral cells that you carry. While the study of evolution is clearly important for understanding how pathogenic bacteria and viruses might evolve to kill you, evolution also helps to understand the much more frequent and pleasant and essential interactions with microbes that we have. They are part of human biology, the focus of this particular class. Understanding this relationship matters. It provides actionable information in the studies of health and disease.